The honest truth is that ChatGPT 5 was a big letdown for a lot of people. And if you're feeling this way, you're certainly not alone because to be honest, there are elements of GPT-5 that I really didn't like when it first launched. But after months of actually using the model and testing the model, there are a few very easy ways that you can extract more value out of GPT-5 so you can beat 99% of other ChatGPT users. There are some small tweaks that you can make to get much more out of GPT-5. The reason why things have changed is is because they've changed the fundamental architecture of the platform. So the same prompts that used to work on GPT-4 are now triggering inferior processing. So you're literally competing against an invisible system designed to balance quality with compute costs. Here's how you can circumvent that to achieve better results. So here's what actually changed from GPT-4 to GPT-5. They've consolidated models. So, you know, we used to have 4.0 and we used to have 0.3. They've consolidated into GPT-5, which optimizes for a blend of output and efficiency and the system especially if you're on auto mode automatically defaults to efficiency over quality so in today's video i'm going to give you all of the solutions to change that and before we get into the rest of the video make sure to subscribe and turn on the post notification bell so i can help you get an edge in ai this channel is dedicated to helping you level up your life and your finances by harnessing the power of ai let's get into it solution number one activation phrases so this is a very easy way that you can get deeper responses from GPT because you don't want a shallow answer. You actually want it to think deeply. So these are some sentences that you can put into your prompt to elicit a better response. Think deeply about this. Think carefully about this. Think step by step. Analyze this thoroughly versus this is important. Be thorough. Give me a good answer. Please be detailed. That small change in phrasing I found has made a huge difference. For example, if you're getting GPT to run an investment analysis and you just put in do an investment analysis on X, Y, and Z, it might give you a basic pros and cons list. It'll give you general advice, but it won't personalize it and it will probably be surface level only. If you add even just the four words, think deeply about this, you'll elicit things like second order effects, tax implications, timeline considerations, risk assessment, and opportunity costs. So that's a small thing, but now let's move on to solution number two, which is one of the most important parts of prompting, and that is setting up the correct context. If you want to get the best possible response, and this is especially important whenever you're asking for career advice, life advice, or anything that requires extra detail, you wanna be providing as much context as possible. So a context framework that you can copy and we'll leave everything in the description in terms of the prompting side of this video. You could say, you are an expert in X role, helping me achieve X objective. Context about me, your background, your goals, your constraints. For every response, consider multiple perspectives, identify assumptions and edge cases, provide actionable next steps, flag any risks or considerations. I remember the step before, think deeply about this request. This works because it circumvents the efficiency side of GPT-5 to activate advanced reasoning patterns to get a better response. So if you have have complex projects and decisions to make. So strategy planning, technical architecture, investment decisions, career moves, business analysis. This is the way to structure your prompts. Now I've got a pro tip for you. Not many people in AI are going to tell you about, but you can actually save these as templates. So you can create different versions for different use cases, business context, technical context, creative context. You can have a notion or a notes or, you know, a Google doc, wherever you want to save them. And you can have all of your templates saved. So then when you have new questions, you can just fill out the templates instead of having to remember Remember all of this stuff from scratch and we'll leave the necessary resource in the description below so you can create this. For example, if you run a SaaS, so a software as a service company, and you ask GPT, oh, how do I improve my SaaS onboarding? You'll probably just get generic best practices right around the industry. But if you use this framework and say, you are a growth expert helping me achieve more signups to my SaaS product, context about me, I've run the SaaS for five years, my goal is to scale it to this, these are my constraints, the SaaS is $50 a month, we have an X percent churn rate, then you're going to get a much much better answer. All right, now moving on to solution number three. And this is something that I don't see many people using, but it's actually really important. It's something I subconsciously use on a regular basis to get better response. And this is controlling your output. You know, we can do this prompt and we might get pages and pages of information back, but maybe we just want to find out one specific element, or maybe we just want dot points to help us make a better decision. Or maybe we do want a huge analysis. So you've got to tell it the right length and detail to go into to get the best response. So if you say ultra concise, key points in 100 words, it's going to sum summarize it in 100 words. I'll often use this for like a question. So for example, the other day I was doing some research on protein muscle synthesis, trying to work out basically what 
windows to eat my protein in to get maximum results because I go to the gym and I didn't put in ultra concise and it gave me like huge answers. And then I read the prompt and I said, you know, be concise under 100 words. And it basically gave me exactly the information I wanted with no other fluff. So just writing a few words can save you a lot of time. If you do want more detail, you can say three to five paragraph explanation. And if you want something more comprehensive, you can always ask it for a 500 word analysis, but control the output and you will get much better results. Solution number four, structure your prompts in the correct way. There was research that found that the output quality improved by 3.2 X when you have structured input versus unstructured input. So generally speaking, you want to start with the task. So what you want done, then you want to provide the context, then you want to provide the requirements and then the format. So how you want the output. And then of course, step one, think deeply about this or another specific trigger at the end to elicit the response that we want and circumvent the efficiency features of the platform. Now, what you can actually do to guarantee that you get a better result on a deeper prompt is in the top left corner of ChatGPT, you can change it to thinking mode or pro mode. However, this will take a lot longer. So auto is often going to default because they have energy constraints, of course, to the cheapest and fastest version, but the outputs won't be as good and it's prone to more hallucinations and wrong data. So if there's something where you really need correct data or you really need a correct response and like big business decisions, if you need a hand with that, you probably want the correct response. Using thinking I've found is the best balance. And then if you have a research task, so if you want to research a specific project, so you know, you look at properties and you want rental yields and you want average growth in that area, then pro is probably going to be better, but it's going to take much, much longer. So making sure you use the correct model is also really important and underrated because most people are just using chat GPT. I would say 99% of people are just using it on auto and are getting like really fast responses, but aren't necessarily tweaking it for what they need. So recently I've been using thinking a lot. I think it's really good if you want better responses, but it does take a bit longer. So if you're asking it how many calories in a 100 gram ribeye steak, you probably don't need thinking. But if you're asking it for a detailed study on how your muscles synthesize the protein from that steak, you might actually benefit from thinking to get better information, especially as you get into stuff that actually potentially could impact your life. Now, my next tip is very powerful and this is self-refinement. So what you can do is actually, instead of having to re-prompt ChatGPT, you can get it to already refine and go over its response twice before it even gives you a response. So you can copy this refinement framework that you can paste at the end of your prompt, which makes it go over its work. If you want to go a step further, what I actually did this morning and regularly do habitually now is I'll actually use two LLMs for this. So I will have my response from one LLM, so ChatGPT or Gemini, and then I'll go into the other LLM and I will put this refinement prompt in and then I will get it to rate the response from the other LLM and then I'll feed the feedback back to the first LLM that I used. So if that's, you know, Gemini into GPT back into Gemini, I find the responses are way better. doesn't matter what way you do it, but but I find the responses are way better when I actually run two LLMs side by side, one giving feedback on the other LLM. And you'd be surprised how much they hallucinate. You're basically getting two different databases because they're both trained on different data. So one might miss something that the other one catches. This is especially important for big decisions. Like I had some big decisions to make around my channels recently. Although I had a good framework, I wanted Gemini to check some of the logic from ChatGPT. And because Gemini is more plugged into YouTube because obviously it's by Google, it gave me some information that ChatGPT missed. And then I went back with that information and GPT said, yeah, there was actually a slight flaw and you know, this could be tweaked to become even better. The first step, if you're just gonna use one LLM is putting in this prompt to make GPT refine its own work. But if you want extra refinement, use two LLMs together. And of course, the most powerful outputs are gonna come if you stack all five of these methods together, this is gonna give you the maximum impact. So the complete ultimate prompting framework right now in 2025, and this will probably won't change throughout 2026, but obviously as we get new models, we'll need, we'll need to reassess. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and have the notification bell turned on so you don't miss a video. The complete framework is one context, two structure, three output, four refinement, five activation. If you have a complex prompt and you use this, you are going to get an amazing answer, especially if you select the right model. But even if you go on auto, using this framework is likely going to get you a better response. And you can expect multiples on your existing prompts in terms of output. At the end of the day, what most people do is they use old prompting methods or they're just lazy with their prompts. What smart people do, people that are using AI to augment their life and augment their business are using triggers to process information consistently and they use structured frameworks in order to get the most out of their prompts. If you think about it, this is also a time efficiency thing because you might be doing a prompt on a business idea for 30 minutes, but if you can get 4X the output in those 30 minutes by making your prompts slightly better, for example, using the techniques in today's video, then you essentially get two hours worth of research time done in 30 minutes. So you can significantly increase your productivity, which makes you more money. So if you actually implement this over a consistent basis over time, you should get huge compound 
compounded results, which will in turn make you more money. So we'll leave in the description below the context framework that you can use. Test it out. Let me know what you think in the comments because I found this framework to be much better than just blindly prompting GPT. And it's more important now than ever with the changes that OpenAI has made to their models. So I'll see you in the next video. Hope you enjoyed. Have a lovely rest of your day. Peace out.